Ann Davis Art Palm. I live at 352 Kelkin Street. Uh, I would like to read a letter that I wrote to the Desert Valley Times. Maybe some of you may have read it already. But before I do, uh, in the letter, I'm somewhat critical of the city as far as the uh, vet center is concerned. And I certainly want to emphasize that I recognize all the help the city has given the vet center. Uh, any criticism strictly has to do with what you want to do with this lot and what you have done in the past. Okay. Once again, the city of Mesquite is showing its total disregard for this neighborhood and the Veterans Center. Some months ago, the city was using the city owned lot just west of the Vet Center and between two residential neighborhoods as a dumping storage area for toxic used asphalt. I say toxic because the city landfill in Las Vegas charges extra when they dump asphalt because they grilled it toxic. The toxic, uh, let me start over there again, as a dumping storage area for toxic used asphalt, treating us to toxic clouds of dust, noise, and truck traffic. I'm talking about these great big giant trucks with the trailer behind them, bouncing in and out and across that lot and raising all kinds of dust. And we managed to get it stopped. Now the city wants to build a dirt BMX bicycle track. They're creating more dust, noise, and traffic, and probably bright lights at night in this area. I don't know if the planet put lights there or not. Elderly veterans are coming and going to the vet center all the time, and they don't need to be subjected to this either. The, dust, the dirt dust created will no doubt be tainted with the toxic asphalt we need to have dust lingers. I'm sure these bicycles will crash ever so often into the dirt and eventually dig down to where the asphalt is. As I said in my asphalt letter, in this vast desert we live in, there has to be a more appropriate place for this activity. I want to emphasize there are four We live, we personally live four houses from this track, and we don't want what everything that this thing could do. Rivers Bend homes, there's the only thing separating their homes from this is a, I think, a five foot wall. Well, dust has, can very easily fly over dust with a five foot wall, as well as the noise. Uh, this, this affects houses on Emmerine, Verona, Verona, and Kelkin Street, and, as well as the River Step homes. Thank you. Michael Martin. Uh, Jimmy White, Mesquite resident. I certainly can't talk to the last two speakers, and I wouldn't want to. I was going to uh, say something about the dust problem in the residential neighborhood. I, I just want to say I think the mayor's suggestion for an alternative site would go a long way towards appeasing almost anybody here that has anything to say against it. I think it's a wonderful suggestion. Call me a light, <laughs> I'm R. Phillips, I have 521 Kiley Avenue in uh, Coyote Willows, live near this activity. Now I feel that uh, this BMX bike track is an excellent idea for our young people in this community. They need something like this. However, the location you've designated is quite inappropriate. One of the, some of the reasons are that this section of Haven Lane up through Riverside has high traffic, and this is due to two housing additions plus the extension of the road down from the interchange of I-15 and northern north uh, traffic coming down. So that traffic has been we've noticed is going up significantly there. So this is an unsafe condition for young kids, and most of the kids will come from the east side of uh, Riverside. I think more kids live over there, and therefore the 
crossing Riverside as well as coming along Haven will, will not be appropriate. Now also, is the city going to be liable for injuries on the track area? And certainly there will be injuries, I would imagine, especially if you put it on an asphalt <laughs> park there. Uh, with no parking area, parents are likely, if they come from, from a distance, bring their kids in, with bikes, they dump them off and pick them up. This may cause a traffic problem on the Haven. Is there, oh, and also, no matter where you put it, are there going to be city monitors there as the big kids come in at night or in the afternoon uh, and run the little kids off? You know there's going to be fights break out with some injuries with no toilets on the, on the place that you're designating. Where do the kids relieve themselves? They run over to the fence or anywhere they please? <coughs> There, there is a large area, approximately twice the area, down east from Haven Lane, east of Haven Park and the school, where parking could be provided, and toilets, even porta potties could be provided. And the traffic in this area of Haven Lane is uh, much lighter, very much lighter. And there's no cross traffic like a riverside or anything else going on there. So this seems like it would be a much safer place, and most of the kids are on the east side of Riverside anyway. They would be more likely to come down to that area. Now I asked you to look at other sites. Uh, another site had been identified, and uh, there, and the site at East Haven, lot there, I believe the city, it's, you have some equipment on there right now, but it could be used as this park area. So. I urge you to reconsider the location, but not the idea of a bike path park. Thank you. You sure? Go. Hi, my name is Karen Rogina. I live on Kelkin. And pretty much the questions I was going to ask, he just asked. But one of the things in reconsidering that other lot is a good idea. I have grandkids in Green you know, in that area. Usually there's like all the neighborhood grandkids playing in our front yard at the basketball. Um, the traffic is insane. That's an insane place to put that. If you know, even drivers, not too long ago, the one that was hit by the garbage truck and died. It's going to be the same situation with kids darting on their bikes. You can't always see the traffic. To me, that's putting a bullseye on the back of their heads. Also, we need things for the kids and the youth to do around here, but we need to put spreading it out. You've got the rec center, the long drive, which was supposed to be for our youth, which they have to beg to use it. In fact, I don't know if you guys know, the fifth grade um, football team made the championships over Mesquite and Utah. And they're fighting for a place to have the game here. We might have to play the Mwapa team against the Mesquite team in Utah, because we can't get a place here. That's insane. Uh, but the long drive, the water park is great, except half the year you can't use it because the kids are getting stung by bees. We need to figure out a way to have something for our youth to do, but something that's followed through, not jump in. Maybe it'll work in a year, maybe it won't. To me, that's not looking at the big picture for the kids. That's just being able to say, oh, well, we tried, it's not working. We need a plan that goes together. Now, at the rec center, that would make sense. Maybe they can combine resources to work together, but these kids can't afford a lot, which I'm glad they're, you know, you're doing that, but you can't spread them all over the city and expect parents to be able to get them to different places. Not all kids like ride bikes, not all like to swim. We need to somehow work it in an area where it's kind of all together and follow through. I've called probably, without exaggeration, over the last two years, 30 times about the bees. No one's ever bothered to call back. We take the grandkids up there and we end up having to go to Bunkerville so they could play in the water park and not get stung. So I would like to see more follow through than just a plan, let's do this, and if a year it works, it doesn't work, whatever, we'll go from there. Rather than spend that expense in a year, tear it out and do it somewhere else, that's a lot of money that could be spent on our youth instead of wasted on not a thorough plan. Thank you. <coughs> 